Hi everyone and welcome to this week's Prophecy Update. It's our desire to bring the events that are happening in the world from a biblical perspective and also a prophetic perspective. So thanks for joining us this week. What we want to talk about this week is we're starting to watch the woke corporations around the world start eliminating different sectors of society. And right now, I want to focus in on the elimination and the targeting of what they're trying to do to meat. Now, you think, what's the big deal? Why are they targeting, targeting meat? Well, anyway, uh, they want to get rid of meat. That's the problem. They want to eliminate you consuming meat and other foods that eventually they're going to mandate. And again, why is this significant to Christians? Because it is prophesied in 1 Timothy 4, uh, verses 3 through 4, that in the great apostasy of the church, in the last days of the church, the church would start telling people it is their moral duty to not eat meat or certain foods. They will forbid certain foods in the last days. And so when we see this happening in our culture, uh, it signals to us that eventually the church will adopt it as it normally does in apostasy. And then uh, eventually the church will push it. So we're seeing it in the, the society start up par as part of this wokeism that you know is prevailing through all society. And now it's going to target meat. And so we're going to look at that, how, how it's stair-stepping our way to eventually the church pushing this agenda as well. As we already know, the church is pushing this agenda. Uh, it, many of the churches are now woke. They're pushing the Babylonian morality. They're pushing critical race theory like the schools are. They're promoting white privilege. They're doing all this other stuff, social justice issues. Um, that you see coming out of Marxism now invading the church and the pastors in the churches are pushing this. Well, the elimination of meat is part of the Babylonian religion. It is for a form of asceticism that comes from false religions, that they forbid themselves to do certain things as a mark of spirituality. Well, now the mark of spirituality in wokeism is to not eat meat. Uh, is to eliminate meat and, the, and eliminate the consumption of meat to so-called save the planet. So we're going to talk about that. And we're going to discover that we truly are living in the last days and all the factors are converging. And here's another piece of the puzzle that's coming together and saying, look, it's all happening. Everything that was prophesied in the last days of the church is happening. The great apostasy is happening. And here are the different specific facets of that apostasy that Paul told Timothy oh, over 2,000 years ago would happen. And now you and I are watching this. So we're going to uh, dig in onto this and, and discover where, we're at, where we are at on the prophetic timeline as far as this infiltrating the church. So let's start in 1 Timothy 4, 1 through 4, and get our basis of understanding from Scripture. And it says this, Now the Spirit expressly says that in the latter times. Now this term latter times is important as a timetable for this. Because latter times refer is synonymous with the last days. Last days of what? The last days of this age. The last days of the church age. And so Paul is saying that this is going to happen in the last part of the church age. Now, when it talks about um, the different facets that they're going to uh, forbid marriage, they're going to forbid the eating of certain foods, a lot of people try, I mean, it's just like constant in the commentaries. A lot of people try to, to put this out as, well, it's the Roman Catholic Church uh, forbidding the priests to marry and obviously the different uh, aspects of the Roman Catholicism that eliminates meat on Good Friday and different things like that. I get that, and that might be a precursor, a foreshadowing of what is to come, but that happening in history is not part of the latter times. Again, it could foreshadow, it could say this will be like that, you know, that type of thing. But most of your commentators will say this has already happened, and, and it's not, because it's, it's, it's pinpointed by Paul that in the latter times. And so 
Yes, in church history, have people forbidden the eating of certain foods and forbidding of marriage? Of course they have. Yes, that's, ha that's happened. The reasons were always spiritual, right? And, but in the future, it will be a for a spiritual reason, but the content will change. The, the meaning of it will change. It will always be for a spiritual issue, but the content of what it is will change. And that's what we want to understand. Anyway, it continues on. Uh, some will depart from the faith, and that's talking about the great apostasy the, uh, that the Scripture predicts, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, and different various passages like this that talk about that the church, uh, for the majority part of it, will end in apostasy, right? And apostasy can be different degrees of apostasy. So to understand apostasy, we must understand that Yes, apostasy has to do sometimes with unbelievers that pretend to be believers and they depart from the faith. That's apostasy. But apostasy can happen to believers as well. Uh, we've seen believers depart from the faith. We've seen believers that don't believe certain aspects of the faith. They'll say they believe in Jesus, but they, but they don't believe in creation. They don't believe in you know, a six-day creation or, or something to that effect. So they'll have gaps in their game of categories of unbelief, of, of, of apostasy. And so uh, believers can apostatize as well. And this is why there's so many warnings in Scripture about being deceived. Because it is possible for a believer to get into false doctrine and to depart from previously held views and depart into false doctrine. That's so common. I, you know, that's a common occurrence. But what's, what Paul is saying is this, in the, in the last times, there's going to be a great apostasy, a major apostasy, that the majority of people will do this, even unbelievers and believers alike. But there will always be a Smyrna, a Philadelphia remnant that won't apostatize. Uh, and then it, says, it goes on, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. So this is what they will start believing. They will believe false doctrines that come from demons, right, and deceiving spirits. Um, and they'll speak lies and hypocrisy. So they'll tell people to do something that they themselves won't do. So they, they might go up there in, in a pulpit and say, we need to apologize for our white privilege, but behind the scenes, that guy doesn't even believe in it. But he'll just go with it because that's what the society wants. That's what people want to hear. So they tell people what they want to hear. It doesn't necessarily mean that they believe it themselves. So they're hypocrites, even in false theology. So a lot of, a lot of these false teachers will teach a false theology, and they themselves don't even believe it. But they know it makes money, and know, they know it gathers a crowd, and so they do it. So this is the idea of speaking lies in hypocrisy. Anyway, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron. So it doesn't even bother them just to flat out lie. These people could go take a lie detector test and pass a lie detector test because their consciences uh, are seared. They don't feel anything. There's no conviction when they, they tell lies. They just bold-faced lie. And that's the problem with them. So here we are getting into the, the crux of the matter. It says, forbidding to marry, I'll, ta I'll tackle that in just a bit, and commanding to abstain from meats or slash foods, the Greek word is broma. Uh, it's used interchangeably. It can mean foods, but a lot of times in Scripture, it's a reference to meats. Uh, so, so it could go either way. So abstain from meats or certain foods. Um... I think the better translation is meat, um, but I could be wrong, but it seems that the preponderance of scriptures that use this word broma uh, in Greek refer to meat. So uh, I could be wrong, but I, I think it really means meats rather than just foods in general, okay? And which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. Now, now what did God say about meats? Well, he said it back in, after the flood, after Noah's day, he said that you can now eat meat uh, from different animals. And then in, in, if you were a part of the nation of Israel, there were certain animals that were off limits that were not kosher. But as far as the Gentiles are concerned, they could eat anything they want, uh, living flesh of, of animals and things of that nature. The only forbidden, uh, the thing that's forbidden is the meat, uh, you can't drink blood, can't eat blood, and the blood's got to be drained out of the animal.
So that's the only thing that's that's still forbidden. Well, anyway, um, those things that God said back in Noah's day, that so now you can eat these things, are to be received with thanksgiving for those who believe and know the truth. They are not to be forbidden to eat. And, and, and verse 4 says, for every creature of God is good. And this is why I think that the passage, the context is referring to meat because it refers to every creature. If it was referring to just food in general, it would, Paul, it would seem to, he would add like vegetables or meats and, or sorry, not meats, but, uh, uh, you know, potatoes, whatever, your beans, whatever. He doesn't refer to that. He says every creature. So I believe the passage lends itself to the forbidding of eating meat because of this refer- reference to every creature of God is good and nothing is to be refused if it, if it is received with thanksgiving. So we're dealing with meats. Anyway, the idea here is that the seeds of a false morality are already being sown in our country and around the world. We call it Babylonianism uh, or 180ism or lawlessness. And this is the idea of Satan's system having its own set of laws that are diametrically opposed to God's. That's why we call it 180. And again, just to refresh our minds, when God says something's good, they say it's evil. When God says that this is evil, they say it's good. That's why we, where we get the term 180ism or lawlessness. That's the biblical term um, that we're referring to. But it is a false morality that they're pushing. So wokeism, social justice, critical race theory, all of this kind of nonsense, the LGBT movement, all kinds of things of that nature, transgender movement, all of that fits under a false morality from Babylon. And eventually these seeds that are sown in society are taking hold of society, as you see, and then eventually will take hold and be planted in the church. And that's where it's going. So you think about asceticism, uh, forbidding you know to wear certain things or do certain things or not eat certain things. Um, asceticism was introduced in the church very early on. It was taught by the Incranites, the Martianites, and afterwards by Gnostic Manichaeanism. Um, by the way, Gnostic Manichaeanism is, is, is where Augustine got the concepts of what we call Calvinism today. Calvinism derives itself from Gnostic Manichaeanism. Uh, Mani was a Gnostic from Iran, and again, uh, Augustine was a follower of Mani, and when he started debating Pelagius, he brought in a lot of Gnostic Manichaean um, arguments from Mani uh, to argue against Pelagius, and so uh, Augustine is the one who brought fatalism and determinism into Christianity. Now we call it Calvinism, but Calvinism is a false doctrine. It comes directly from Gnostic Manichaeanism. It's a problem. Again, I don't want to go too far into that, but just I want to state that for the record. So basically, you know, back in history, they would say that marriage, uh, like the, the Manichaeans, the Gnostic Manichaeans would say that marriage was the invention of an evil god who considered it as sinful to, to bring creatures into the world, uh, that procreation was wrong, and, 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 and it had all kinds of weird ideas wrapped up in that. Nonetheless, today in our society, they also believe in our society, the wokeism crowd believes that marriage is a social construct that was invented by people, not by God. And so they say because it's a social construct that's invented by the culture or people, then they can change it to, ha- to suit their needs, right? But marriage was, was invented by God, not man. And they do not have the right to change the definition. But see, it's the same thing, uh, same kind of concept. They challenge marriage, right? Or they challenge what you can eat, right? Even though God says it's, it's good. Well, anyway, that's a little bit of a history, and you can study that all you want, but asceticism has always been part of the church. Nonetheless, 
In the last days, it will take hold of the majority of the church. The church will always follow society. Now, let me make that caveat. The apostate church, the Laodicean church, the lukewarm church, the, 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 the false doctrine church always follows society. Society will be here, and then that church will always follow behind it. So where the society is at today, the church is about two or three years behind. And then eventually the church catches up, but then the society is here, and it, it just keeps chasing society. That's what's happening right now. And, of course, society follows the edicts of Satan and demonic ideas, and therefore these demonic and satanic ideas get into the church as, quote-unquote, doctrine. They're fa it's false doctrine, but the origin of, it, of these doctrines are Satan and demons. Anyway, before we get to the meat issue, let's talk about society and in general as this, this concept of forbidding to marry comes into play in our times. So eventually, what it's saying, Paul is saying, is that the church, the apostate church, is going to forbid people to marry. And again, we're saying that this is eventually going to come from society and then come to the church. So today, um, the, there, this idea of forbidding to marry is built on a lie. And the lie is that we have too many people on the planet. That is a lie. We can stick everybody on the planet in the state of Texas and, and have no problem. They, there's plenty of land, plenty of resources, plenty of food available to people. The reason people are starving in different countries is because they live under dictatorships. But there's plenty of food, there's plenty of natural resources. Uh, God has given this planet the ability to give us all that we need. And so the idea that there's too many people on the planet it's basically a lie. So what do they want to do? When eventually they're going to forbid marriage, they basically are wanting not only to attack the sacredness of marriage and uh, the institution of marriage that God ordained, but they're also attacking the primary reason for marriage, which is procreation. And, and so when you attack the institute of marriage, you affect procreation. That's why like gay marriage or a lesbian marriage or whatever doesn't work. Be yes, they can adopt, but they don't procreate. And so it goes against the order of how marriage is supposed to function. The marriage is supposed to have a mom and a dad that can procreate. Well, their mindset is depopulation for the environment. Remember, they believe the lie that there's too many people. And so they want to depopulate the environment. And so, in this new world order, under the Great Reset, under globalism, um, they've already come out and said that they want to not have as many people on the planet. That's obvious. And I think, and again, this is where I'm going to speculate. I think, based on what they have said, they want depopulation. I believe this forbidding of marriage thing, I think the way it works out, is eventually the global system, the, the governments of the world, were, are going to come together and say, look, we're only going to allow certain people to marry and procreate and have kids. We don't want people getting married and just having a slew of kids and causing overpopulation. So they're going to come with a mindset that we want to, we want to limit the number of kids you can have, like they do in China, right? Uh, so there are, there's countries already doing this, so it's not like my speculations out of left field. They're already doing this in China, right? You have one kid, I think they've allowed uh, one more or something like that. And they will eventually moralize not having kids or limiting the number of kids by saying, hey, look, we all have a responsibility to do our part in saving the planet, and so we're, gonna, we're going to forbid marriage and only allow for certain segments of society uh, so they can procreate, but we, we can keep a cap on the number of, of kids that they have. And so, again, based on what they have said, based on what the scriptures are saying and how they get to that point, I think eventually they're going to do that. 
like China is already practicing it. And so they're going to take what the Chinese have done and put it globally on everybody. So I think a time is coming and we're going to, you know, um, see the, the stage start setting for this eventually. If we're still around, we could be raptured today and not see any of this. But again, it's, it's, we're speculating on how they get to forbidding of marriage. Now, the sad part about this is the churches are going to go along with it. The churches are going to forbid marriage. So they're going to be pushing it through the pulpit. And, and, and you can already hear these fake pastors saying it now. Uh, folks, uh, we got to do our part in being good stewards of the planet. And, you know, we're, we're going to have to um, go along with what the government's saying. And we're going we're gonna to support that because there's too many people on the planet. There's overpopulation. So we, we, we want to do our part as good stewards and not advocate everyone getting marriage. We're going to limit marriage. And, uh, and therefore, the church will do the bidding of the globalists. Again, that's the apostate church, and that's how it's going to be. Now, that's how the church ends. So we have yet to see that happen, but it's coming. It's coming. Now, you can get a foretaste of this with the forbidding of marriage with, I, I guess, if you wanted to broadly um, speculate on the, the acceptance of, of uh, same-sex uh, marriage and, and things of that nature, um, that's not necessarily a forbidden, but it is, is a broadening of the intent of the institution of marriage, which makes, which makes basically marriage meaningless. So they're already making marriage meaningless in that sense. Um, and you're going to say, well, are they going to forbid people to have, se uh, have sex? No. They're going to still allow people to have sex, but they're going to sterilize them or... You know, it'll be illegal to to uh, to procreate, and so if someone gets pregnant, they're going to force an abortion on them. So they're going to eliminate that. that. So, but they're not going to eliminate sexual morality, because they, they allow it. They want that. Uh, it suits their purposes for people to be sexually immoral. So, it's just the idea is what marriage produces, which is kids. That's what they're targeting. And can't you already hear? the pastors, the woke pastors behind the pulpit saying, hey, look, you know, that command uh, in Genesis about being fruitful and multiply, you know, that was back then when there was no one on the planet and it was just Adam and Eve and you, we could see that that, that, that that command would be time bound to, their, to that era because, you know, obviously no one on the planet, it's just Adam and Eve. But guys, for the, they're going to say this, but today, there's billions of people. We don't need to be fruitful and multiply. That was then. This is now. And so the, the command uh, doesn't apply to today. That's how they're going to talk about it. And that's what they've done with other issues. They've done that with gay marriage. They've done that with all kinds of issues. Well, that was then. That's, now it's now. It, it, today is today. And it's different now. And so, you know, they'll always time time bound the laws of God and say, well, that was for that era. Now we're dispensationalists and we get it that different eras have different laws. We get that, but there's some that are universal laws like to be fruitful and multiply. That's the dominion mandate. That's still in effect. You are to be fruitful and multiply. It's still in effect today. I understand that the, the 613 commands of Moses uh, have been rendered inoperative, and now we're under the law of the Messiah, and nine of the Ten Commandments are repeated in the law of the Messiah. So there are these commands that transfer back uh, that all through the, the course of time, but they cherry-pick these universal commands and say, no, that's time-bound. And that's what they're going to do about mer uh, fr be fruitful and multiply. You watch. So now let's get to what we are wanting to talk about today, the forbidding of, of eating meat. Again, this is all built on the lie in society that you and I are consuming too many resources of the planet, that the planet just doesn't have enough resources, it doesn't have enough food, and that's a lie. We could feed everybody on this planet had it not been for dictatorships and other factors. There's plenty of food, there's plenty of resources. That's a, that's a lie if they say there's not. 
Again, this goes back to this quote unquote sustainability and global warming lie that they have perpetrated a decade upon decade, going back to uh, the Rio summit in, in uh, I think in the early 90s. I mean, they, they've been doing this, using this as a way of getting their agenda passed. And again, this is the lie, but they say, you know, eating animal meat consumption, the animals produce too much greenhouse gas emissions and hurt our environment. So we're worried about bovine flatulence. I mean, that's how stupid they are. That's how ridiculous they sound. And, and by the way, this is, how, this is how ridiculous you become when you have a Romans 1 mind. They're already starting to put bovine flatulence bags on the cows, as you can see in this picture, to capture their gas emitted from the cow. I mean, this is no joke. This is a Romans 1 mind here. When you see this, this is ridiculous. This is people out of their minds. This is what you do when you lose touch with God. You go crazy. You do stupid things. And they're worried about bovine flatulence hurting the environment. And then they also say, you know, it, uh, you know having cows and animals and chickens and, and pigs for meat consumption is a source of mass deforestation, air and water pollution, in addition to species extinction. And that, that, again, it's all lies. It's all lies. So because we need to save the planet and because there are limited re food resources, they say, then each of us has to do our moral part in rationing of food. And we're going to first start with meat. And we're going to limit you to how much meat you can consume, first of all. And so I've heard even talks about uh, maybe a burger a month. But I can tell you this, if that's how, how it's going to start, they're going to ration it out. And then um, you're not going to be able to get meat at all. And even if they don't ration it out, the cost of meat is going to be so expensive, it'll make it just out of reach for most people. They won't be able to purchase it because it will be so expensive. So how are they doing this? How are they causing a crisis with the meat? How are they causing the prices of meat to rise? Have you checked on the prices of meat? It's going to continue to rise because, again, they want to eliminate it. Again, we go back to the Great Reset. We go back to what Klaus Schwab and the rest of the globalists want to do. And they basically have formed a, ten, a, a technocracy. Uh, and a technocracy is where these social engineers, these billionaires, uh, get to... Uh, engineer our world for us and they are above the governments of the world they're the global elites and they're beyond government but they think they're God uh, they think they're the new gods of this world they think they're gonna live forever and so when you know like this cartoon I, I'm showing you right here when someone says oh God they respond they think it's them they think they're the real gods like Bill Gates George Soros they think they're gods and, and they're going to tell us what we need to do, what kind, of, what kind of environment we want to have and what kind of world we want to have. Um, and again, these are ungodly people taking the place of God. And so what they have done through the Great Reset is create what we call corporate fascism. We've always had corporate fascism, but they're doing this on a global scale. And corporate fascism is when the government and the corporations are working together hand in hand. And in this situation, the, gov the governments are not going to be the ones who have to enforce anything because they're going to enforce everything through the corporations. So if the government wants to eliminate meat, they're going to do it through the corporations. That's how they've been doing it. So have you noticed how so many major corporations, uh, Fortune 500, Fortune 100, have all been pushing wokeism? That's because they've colluded with the government and the Babylonians or the elites to push this narrative to get what they want accomplished and they're doing it through corporations. And basically the idea is monetarily is to destroy the smaller competitors to where you end up with these giant corporations that have no competition and you virtually have a monopoly. So that's why these co corporations are going woke uh, despite losing a lot of customers, like 
to Coca-Cola or to Nike or whatever. They don't really care, or the NBA. They don't care because at the end of the day, this strategy is to destroy small businesses, eliminate the mom and pop stores to where you have just simply giant corporations uh, making all the money hand over fist because they're a monopoly. That's the idea monetarily. That's why these corporations are willing to slice their own throats and eliminate a certain segment of the population because eventually they're going to get that population back because the population won't have anywhere else to go to. You won't be able to go to a mom and pop store. You won't be able to go um, you know, to a restaurant that's owned locally. You'll have to go to a, a, a chain. You'll have to go to a, a Home Depot, a, a Lowe's, or uh, whatever, because there's no mom and pop hardware stores anymore. They've elim- been eliminated because they can't keep up with the regulations of wokeism. So that's the, the mindset behind all of this. So this is happening to the meat industry. So what's behind all of this? Again, corporate fascism, the kings of the earth, and the merchants of the earth are doing a deal together, pushing the lawless system, the whore, the religious system, the alternative morality on people through, through the businesses. Okay, so small businesses are going to go out of business in the meat industry. Now, what do you mean? Well, we're talking about the, those who raise the cattle. They're going to put them out of business. And if it continues any longer the way it's going, the rancher who's growing cattle is going to go out of business. Right now, the ranchers, as of last Friday, are breaking even. So what would be the point of continuing to do their cattle raising? Okay? Again, this is part of an agenda to destroy small business. Um, and they're going to do it through restrictions and, and compliance with ESG, your ESG score, uh, environmental, uh, social, and governance score. This is all wokeism, right? And um, I just heard a, a, an interview very recently. Uh, Glenn Beck was uh, interviewing a Kansas cattleman, Steve Stratford. Um, Again, I don't agree with Glenn Beck's uh, religion. He's a New Age Mormon. But he does do some good interviews sometimes, and I think it's worth uh, repeating this interview because it brought to light really what's going on. And Steve Stratford, uh, you can go on YouTube and listen to some of his uh, broadcasts on YouTube about what's going on, but... They talked about it, and this is what they're doing with beef. The beef prices are rising, they said in this interview, at the production level. Okay, so this growing issue is in the meat packing area of meat, okay? So you have the producers um, who grow the animals, right, raise the animals, And then you have the meat packing plants, where the beef production's at. And then you have the retail that where it it gets sold. So it's right in the middle in the meat packing industry. Okay. Incidentally, as they mentioned, and you already know this, lumber is being targeted, right? Lumber is up 800% in an increase. So there's a housing shortage now, and they're buying houses at prices we've never seen in human history, according to this interview. They segued and talk about uh, they talk about this a little bit, and and uh, as Beck notes, if you look at the Schiller Index, it's double of what it was in 2007. And so basically, what they were saying in this interview, the houses are about 30 percent more expensive to build because of the shortage of lumber, and. To add uh, uh, injury to insult, Biden put out a new tariff on lumber from Canada last Friday, I think it was, and that's obviously going to make the price of lumber more expensive. Okay, so that they're doing that in the lumber industry, but in the beef industry, the packing houses areas are making tons of money, tons of it, hand over fist, and and think about the monopoly of this. There's only four of them. And two of them are foreign-owned. And so America gets 90% of its product from these four. Um, uh, These four major American processing plants. That's called a monopoly. And so they're controlling everything. 
and they're making more money at the packing level than they have ever had before. And to top it off, they're putting out less product. And so where's the incentive for these packing companies to work harder? We put out less product and the price of meat's going up. We're making money hand over fists. And what you start realizing is what the, the, the cattleman was saying on the interview. They're not in it for the Americans. They're, they're in it for making major profits off of this, killing the, the, the guys who are raising the cattle. And this is all part of this wokeism. You know, so they're, they're, they're pushing this. They're pushing their environmentalism through these packing plants and things of that nature. And again, in the interview, Steve Stratford points out that the case is being made that there's collusion going on. Uh, both him and Glenn said that, and we believe so too. We believe the, the whole technocracy that's being formed, that the governments and the, the major corporations and even the big tech are in collusion with each other. We already believe that. So they say this is going on with the beef and lumber industry. We would agree because we already know this is what they have set out to do under the Great Reset. There is collusion going on. They talk about it. The Bible predicts it. The Bible predicts a collusion between the merchants of the earth, the kings of the earth, and the whore of Babylon. Those are the three legged stools of Babylon. And so we already know Scripture predicts it. So when, when Glenn and, uh, Beck and Steve Stratford point this out, that there's collusion going on with the price of beef and lumber, we agree. We agree with that. And think about this. Consumer prices are up 100% in each of the beef and lumber industry. So what's driving the shortages, as they mentioned in this interview, is the collusion between major companies keeping a supply limited. Rather than a shortage of production or, you know, having uh, excessive demand on it. No, no. It's all because of a, a, a concentrated effort to keep the supply limited. And they're doing this with lumber and beef. And so these Fortune 100 companies who control the industry are making gigantic profits, they noted in this interview. And the, the, the producers and the consumers, which are you and I, are getting the raw end of the deal, as they noted. So we're getting messed up. And so they're, they're putting the screws to those who produce and putting the screws to you and I, and they don't care. They're, like the, uh, this rancher said in the interview, he says they're capturing a margin in the middle that is not even a quote unquote percentage equity. That percentage equity is not even theirs and they're capturing it. He said that they're profiting $1,000 per head and basically owning the animal for a week or less. And the producers of the meat who, you know, pigs, cattle, chickens, whatever, who have the animals basically 12 to 18 months investing that time and effort into those animals, think about this, are getting a negative, a minus $100 to a negative minus $20. They're losing money. And it sounds like they said they're trying to put the farmers out of business. Yes, that's the idea. Just like they're trying to put all the small businesses out of business in America and around the world, they are trying to put out the small farmers, uh, the small ranchers who are producing the meat. Of course they are. That's the intent. And it's the idea so they can have control. And, and so that there's, there's, there's no price discovery anymore. There's, there's no uh, way to bid things anymore. You're killing the free market. And so what is their end goal? Kill the free market, free market capitalism, right? and is to have a few large producers, not small producers, but large producers who are raising the cattle, who they can control, who are part of this wokeism, who is part of this ESG, and put all the small producers out of business. That's the idea. So what you see happening in our society is happening to the cattle ranchers. And basically they're destroying our free market system.
it's breaking down. And basically, they can price this meat at the retail sector and give the producer whatever they want, and they're, get, they're killing the producer, and they're killing us because your meat prices are going to rise so much so that you won't be able to buy meat. That's what they're doing, and it's intentional. They want people to eat less meat and, and, and put the price up high because they're fat cats. They're the only ones selling meat. They're making all the money, so they don't care if there's masses and masses of meat production. They don't want that. So they're going along with the wokeism because they're making money in all of this, being the monopoly that they have created. So again, it's not that they're going to say it's the trucking industry and it's not the truckers. They're going to say it's at the cattle ranch level. level. No, no, it's at the meat pack packing plants, the meat processing plants. That's where it's at. And you know, basically, we know this in California. They're putting farmers out of business, controlling the water, obviously, the wokeism. Uh, they don't want the farmers to have water, so they're killing the farmers in ag. Uh, and now, basically, it's going to be too expensive to raise cattle for meat. Um, and so now these other uh, two of the large meat packing plants are now making uh, the wokeism impossible burger, a uh, vegetarian burger or whatever. And so you can see them going down this path. You know, they, they've even talked about synthetic meats and, and fake meat Bill Gates wants to push. That's where they're going with this. And they've got these four um, uh, packing houses, these major packing houses, to say, yeah, we're going along with synthetic meat. We're going to go along with the Impossible Burger and produce a fake, fake meat. And again, it's crazy. But it's coming, and it started, and 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 like as as this cattle rancher who was being interviewed by Glenn Beck, they said, man, this started back in 2015 in concert with the Paris Accords, uh, pushing, you know, this save the planet mentality, eat less meat, uh, don't eat meat. And the banks are getting involved in it as well as, it, with this ESG score thing. And so they're all in line with it. So think about JBS. JBS is one of these, the largest meat packing places in the world. It operates here in America. It's based out of, I think, Brazil, I think. I think. So anyway, JBS is uh, their chief executive officer, Gilberto uh, Tamazani, uh, said, quote, Meat from animals will be a luxury and a very and very pricey in the future. The the people will have to turn to vegetable derived alternatives, which will be cheaper. End quote. Now that's the CEO of JBS, and he's telling people this is what's going to happen. Remember, when people tell you what they're going to do, they're going to do it. So you're, you and I are going to be turned on to vegetable-derived alternatives or synthetic meat or whatever. And here's the meat processing plant guy, CEO, saying it. And notice all these slogans that are going around in society as part of, part of this wokeism. They'll say, more life, less meat. Or they'll say, one green planet. Or they'll say, hashtag, eat for the planet. All of it is to save the planet, which is a lie. But that's how they're framing this lie, is we're going to save the planet. It's a, our moral duty, our moral responsibility. And interesting enough, according to Yahoo News, JBS, world's largest meat supplier, was hit by a cyber attack on Memorial Day weekend. Huh, isn't that interesting? So was that an accident or was that intentional? Sorry, folks, we got hacked by, by cyber attacks. And, and so, you know, it's going to hurt the meat production and it's going to drive up your prices of meat. Huh. Just like our pipeline uh, uh, was cyber attacked. And you're thinking, was this intentional? Was this allowed? Was this one that they wanted to happen? Because when you destroy and mess up our oil, then whose oil do we rely on? Russia's? Talk about Russia collusion. So we, we end up relying on Russia's oil or, Russia, uh, or oil from the Middle East rather than our own oil? 
So our own pipelines attacked and things of that nature. Uh, Biden shuts down the, the pipeline as well. Hey, what are they doing? Look, guys, this is not an accident. Start connecting dots. This is intentional. They're attacking the meat industry. They're attacking the oil industry. They're attacking agriculture because you have to control these sectors of society. They are shutting all of society down so they can control it. And they're going to do it through corporations that are on the wokeism bandwagon. And so uh, they're going to put everyone else out of business. You're going to see corporate fascism or global corporate fascism. And the sad part about all of this, they're going to get the churches on board as well. On all these issues, as you can see, eventually the churches are going to push uh, forbidding to marry because of overpopulation. Then the churches are going to push forbidding to eat meat because we've got to save the planet to do our part, to eliminate greenhouse gases, yada, yada, yada. Um, and what else are the churches going to push? Basically, the apostate church is going to push everything you see coming from society. You know, the church is eventually going to push, you know, we've got to eliminate uh, fossil fuels and, and we've got to get to, uh, uh, to uh, uh, wind and solar and, and crazy expensive alternatives rather than uh, oil or, or gas or whatever. It's crazy. So we're watching another convergence of signs given to the church. Because this passage that we're referring to about the forbidding of marriage, the forbidding of um, eating meat, is in the last times, and it, it is promoted by the church. That's what Paul is trying to point out. These things are happening within the church. Yes, it's apostasy, and these are apostate pastors and apostate churches, but they're pushing these issues. So very soon, we could see that happening in the church. And again, um, the rapture could happen any time, and, and the false church, if, if the rapture happened and took the real church, the false church would still be here, right? And the false church would obviously go on to continue this and uh, eventually that false church will come under the banner of the, the horror of Babylon. But look, there's going to be a lot of so-called Christians left behind because they never were born again. They never were saved. And so um, maybe we can see this. Maybe we won't. I don't know. I mean, if we, if we get rapture tonight, we're not going to see any of this. But the false church eventually will do it. The false church will go along with the forbidden of marriage and the eating of meat. And we, we may be gone, but they will push it because Paul said the false church is going to push it. And so if he said it, it's going to happen. Whether we're raptured before that or we start seeing the inklings of that, we'll, we'll watch and see. I don't know. But remember this, our Lord can come for us at any point in time. Um, and, and therefore... Um, as Jesus said, when you start seeing these things begin to happen, look up, lift up your heads, because your redemption draws near. Well, with all that being said, just a couple of reminders before we go. Make sure that you get on our Vimeo, our Rumble uh, accounts, and um, you, you get on this alternative YouTube. We don't know how long we'll stay on YouTube because we're, we're, we're functioning under a different platform on YouTube because uh, our channel got eliminated. Um, but make sure you got Rumble. Make sure you got a Vimeo. And also, make sure that you also can uh, get access to our podcast. It's called Our podcast is called The Anchor. And um, if you go on iTunes, Spotify, Podbeam, iHeartRadio, um, different places like that, you will find us under The Anchor. And you can listen to the audio versions. You can also listen to the audio version on Sermon Audio. Uh, dot com. And it's not just prophecy updates, guys. We, we do our sermons up there, our Bible studies, our Q&A of current events on Wednesday nights. Um, I do uh, Coping with Crisis. I'm doing a Revelation series. Um, all kinds of things. So there's you just got to keep looking out for it. I also do a discipleship uh, called Foundations for Discipleship, which is pure systematic theology. So take note of that. Um, but also, join us on Wednesdays at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. We do a Q&A uh, type thing of current events where we allow you to ask questions, the audience to ask questions, 
And so that's every Wednesday at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. We're live and streaming that on our YouTube channel, okay? And then lastly, uh, we need your prayers. We are attacked constantly spiritually. We need your prayers to lift us up to, for protection. And we need your help financially. We're a small church and we need every ounce of help we can get. And so if the Lord puts it on your heart to help us financially, we would appreciate that very much. It would help us to eventually buy a new building. Uh, we, we don't even have a building. We're renting a place out right now. But um, we eventually want to have our own building. Uh, and we're getting ready to break ground on it. But we, we still need the financing for that, obviously. And, and then we just need money just to, for our operations. Uh, to do all of this on the videos takes a lot of time, a lot of effort. There's probably, if I would say, five to seven people involved in the production of these videos. And so it's a lot of work. It's, there's a lot of work that goes into it. And sometimes you have to pay these people to help you get these production things accomplished. So any amount would help if you want to help us continue our ministry to get the truth out in these last days. Anyway, we'll depart with this. When you see these things begin, begin to happen, like the forbidding of marriage, like the forbidding of eating of meat, look up, lift up your heads because your redemption draws near. God bless you. We'll see you next time.